Welcome to this webinar. Hi, everyone. Um, today, I will be talking about one of our latest products, um, Graffiti Diagram Editor for Atlassian Confluence. Let's start off uh, with a per little personal information. Uh, my name is Jens Böhm. Um, I've been with Yworks for the past nine years and have worked as a developer on our diagramming library of Wi Files. Um, on C Sharp and web, pl web platforms. Currently, I'm the project lead for the Graffiti for Confluence team here at Wildworks, and I still work on Wi-Fi for HTML as a developer. So here's an overview of the topics we will be touching today. Um, you'll be hearing um, about how Graffiti can enrich your Confluence workflow by adding interactive diagrams. I'll give you a quick guide how you can install Graffiti from the Atlassian Marketplace. Then I'll tell you how Graffiti relates to our free online diagram editor, Wired Live. I'll show you how to create and edit diagrams with Graffiti. And I'll give you a few insider tips and tricks for those of you who already have a little experience with graffiti or with wildlife diagramming. Additionally, I'll present you a roadmap for the next release. Finally, um, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions about graffiti. If you have any questions along the way, just feel free to post them. I will address uh, all the questions at the end of the webinar. So, um, why do you need Graffiti for Confluence? Graffiti is an interactive editor for diagrams like org charts, flow charts, UML diagrams, uh, BPMN diagrams, and basically um, general graphs of any kind. So, if you have connected data, um, you can visualize them with Graffiti. Um, you can model your connected data in a visual way and change properties like styling information, um, the, the visual re representation of the items, and also attach data. You can add interactive or static diagrams to any Confluence page you can create and edit those diagrams directly in the web browser within Confluence without having to start another application and without having to deal with um, attachments and image embedding and that kind of stuff. You can share these diagrams with other Confluence users, um, which in turn can view, explore, and edit the diagrams. So that um, makes it possible to collaborate um, with other Confluence users on diagram creation. Graffiti is a lightweight app. Um, it does not affect uh, the performance of your Confluence system, since basically everything um, you do uh, runs in your local browser. and um, no um, computations are uh, performed on the Confluence server. Um, it has an intuitive, intuitive user interface that enables you to create and edit diagrams quickly and store them directly in Confluence. The flexible automatic layout styles allow to create clear, well-arranged diagrams in basically no time. Graffiti also uses the built-in rights management of Confluence to ensure that only users with write permissions can modify a diagram. Um, so a few quick words um, on installing Graffiti in Confluence. Um, it's simple if you are a Confluence administrator. Obviously, you have to be an administrator to, to install apps. If, if you are not an administrator, please um, contact your admin and you can ask him to install Graffiti for you. Um, basically, you install Graffiti just like any other Confluence app in uh, your admin panel in uh, the Manage Apps section. Um, you can search there for Graffiti um, 
in the Atlassian marketplace. Um, I can give you a quick uh, showcase here. Uh, we'll just search for gravity, and this is it. And um, you can um, try it for free, or you can buy a license and then install this in um, in your Confluence environment. So how, how does, uh, I, I mentioned Wired Live. Um, some of you might know Wired Live as a, uh, our free uh, online diagramming tool, um, which we host at uh, HTTPS um, wireworks.com slash Wired minus live. Um, if you are already, um, oh, yeah, just let me tell you um, how both of them relate because they are related. So if you are already um, a user of Graffiti, um, the Wired Live UI uh, should look pretty familiar to you. If you are already a Wired Live user, then you might recognize the, the Graffiti UI. Um, this is because Graffiti um, builds upon Wired Live and integrates the diagram editor into the Confluence environment. Both are fully compatible which means that you can open diagrams created in Graffiti with Wildlife. You can even send uh, Graffiti diagrams to people that don't have access to Confluence. And they can open and edit them with Wildlife uh, without any reg registration or installation process. So it's just basically um, an application that runs in the browser for free. Almost everything you can do with Graffiti um, can also be done with Wildlife. Uh, so you might ask why do I need uh, Graffiti anyway? Um, so Graffiti um, adds the Confluence integration on top of Wildlife. This means that you can embed diagrams into Confluence pages. You can edit them in place, easily share them with other users and collaborate on diagram creation. With Wildlife, um, you can only save and export diagrams to a hard drive or a cloud space. So you have to manually send them to other users and you don't have versioning and stuff like that. Um, so with Graffiti, you get the automatic uh, versioning that's already built in Confluence. Um, in, in the future, Graffiti might deviate further from Wildlife um, since we aim to add more features that will be included in Wildlife. And give you a quick uh, view of, of Wildlife. Um, this is how um, it looks like. Um, <clears throat> basically, that's um, the Graffiti UI, but it, it simply runs in the browser. OK, um, so let's continue um, with um, the diagram creation. Let's uh, dive down into the depth of Confluence. Um, so I've um, created an empty Confluence page here. Um, I think most of you uh, know Confluence already um, as um, uh, content management. Um, so um, yeah, basically um, there are um, two ways in which you can create um, a diagram. Um, the first way is um, if you are already in, in edit mode uh, in, in the page sources, um, you can click this insert content button here and you get um, uh, create graffiti diagram and um, you can uh, insert it like this. But in, in our case, I won't do it like this. So I'll just close it again. Um, the other way is if you are here in, in the page, uh, in the actual page view, you can click this menu button and click Add Diagram. So uh, now Graffiti, the Graffiti UI starts up. Um, and yeah, we get a welcome dialog. Um, so in our case, I'll just open one of the sample graphs. So we have some data to start with. <clears throat> so yeah, like this. Um, so now we have um, created our graph. And 
um, I'll come to the actual editing later. Um, now we'll just um, click save and exit to embed the graph into our Confluence page. We have to, to specify a name because uh, it's a new diagram. Um, so I, I just type in some name, diagram one, and we can uh, choose some other options here. Um, for instance, um, the width and height of the embedded diagram. We'll just make it a little bit bigger. Um, and you can choose whether um, the embedding is interactive, so we can scroll and, and zoom through the diagram, or if it's a, a static image. We'll just <coughs> leave it on interactive. And there are more um, embedding options, for instance, like alignment and stuff like that. So we just hit save and return. And we have our diagram embedded into our Confluence page. Um, so basically, that's the easiest way um, to get your diagram into your, your Confluence page. Um, and since this is the interactive view, we can even um, zoom here and uh, pan around. OK. So, but um, this was this was very quick. Um, let's click the edit button again, so we can actually um, edit the diagram and create our own data. So, here on the right, uh, we have a palette with different kinds of shapes that we can just drag and drop into the graph. Um, for instance, uh, we have here the reason to use the, the ones that are already part of the of the current graph, but we could, could also um, drag in any other kinds of, of items like this. And we can also um, choose different types of edges or relationships um, and drag them onto the nodes we have just created. Or we, we could simply uh, drag from, from a node to another one to create an edge with a default style. Um, there are um, a lot of, of um, predefined palettes here, with different shapes. Um, we have flowchart palette and network symbols and people's icons, UML, BPM, and so on. Um, <clears throat> So, um, but that's not it. You can even create your own palettes with custom icons or with customized, um, with customized styles, like customized shapes. Um, I'll show you that later. Um, so we have created some items. Um, maybe we want to, um, to add some textual information. So we can right click um, a node and choose add label and type, just type some text in here. We can also, uh, now the, the text is added beneath the node, we could also drag it on top of the node, like that. This way you can, can add um, textual information to your graph structure. <clears throat> For those of you who prefer keyboards, uh, you can also press F2 to open the label editor. Um, here in the top, we have toolbar, which um, contains the usual uh, editing icons, uh, items like undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, delete, um, fit content, which um, if, we, if we zoom in, we can uh, fit the graph into the bounds. Um, and you can switch on orthogonal edge creation, which um, creates edges in orthogonal fashion like this, um, and snapping, which is already enabled. This is um, when you drag nodes or other items around, you get those help lines um, that help you to arrange um, the items. Um, so you can turn that off and, um, whoops, and you can uh, move the node freely without the snap lines. i just turn it on again. <clears throat> So now we have created nodes, um, which are not really uh, visually um, pleasing on, on the grid. So um, 
um, later, um, uh, before, beforehand, I, I talked about uh, automatic layout. So now we want to run a layout algorithm that places those nodes um, nicely uh, in the graph. So um, this is what this layout menu here is for. You can choose from different automatic layout styles. Um, first one is hierarchic. Uh, I think that's pretty good for this graph. Um, so we can just hit apply and see what it looks like. So, and this way the, the graph is transformed with an automatic layout. So um, we get a nice hierarchical view of, of the data. Um, you can customize this. There are several options for each layout. For instance, we could um, say we um, want the hierarchy to go from, from left to right instead, from top to bottom. And it looks like this. Um, there are other options like node distances and stuff like that. But you could, could also switch um, to a whole different um, layout, for instance, organic, which would look like this in this kind of graph. And there are also other options like orthogonal. Um, all of these layout algorithms have, have their own options which you can use to tweak them um, to fit your graph, to look exactly like, like you want it to. <clears throat> okay, so um, now maybe we want to change um, these nodes because they now they look pretty different from the ones in the original graph. So um, you can do that in the properties view. Um, here you get properties for the, the item that is currently selected. You get the position and the size. Um, and you can also set um, colors. For instance, you could set a fill color. Um, maybe kind of blue like this. And you can also set a stroke color. And now this um, particular color should show up in the recently used palette. So um, if you want to, to create more nodes with the same um, color, you can drag them from, from the recently used palette. Um, in the properties panel, there are also um, other um, kind of properties, like you could, you could change the shape, um, uh, you could change the stroke thickness and stuff like that. And you can also um, attach a custom URL and a description um, to, your, to your items. So for instance, I could type here hdbswayworks.com. Uh, so that's our website. <clears throat> and um, so just remember this, it's this node that um, has the link. And now if we update um, the graph, we can actually click the node and uh, yeah, we go to the Wireworks website. All right, but um, that's not it. You can do even more. Um, now, when you have created your graph um, using the palette and layout and properties, and the graph looks like you wanted to, um, and you, you wanted to, um, for instance, you wanted to uh, send it to, to a customer um, that doesn't have um, access to your um, Confluence system, you can export it um, here in, in the, the menu. Just click the menu button and um, you can um, export the graph, for instance, to a PNG or an SVG for high quality or even a PDF. Um, so just click export and um, I get a download of the generated PNG file which looks like this. 
<clears throat> okay, so um, that's the basic features of, of the, the graph editor itself. Now I'm um, coming to the more advanced features uh, or tips and tricks for uh, for users uh, which already have experience with Wired Live or with Graffiti. Um, so some of you might know these features, some some might not. Um, one of the um, one of the really important features is that you can create um, new uh, palettes new custom palettes with this button. So <clears throat> here we have created a new palette. And of course, we can change the name uh, to Jens palette. So this is mine. Um, and now we can add items um, to this palette. For instance, uh, maybe we want this, this round shape here. And we just add it to the palette. And um, then we also want our custom blue shape, and we add it to the palette. Um, and then we also want, say, um, this female icon. Um, so we have three new nodes in the palette. And um, what you can also do um, is you can um, import your own custom images. Um, so, for instance, if you have your um, custom um, icons or custom uh, images of, of people, um, you can just drag them um, into this palette. This is, in this case, the Yworks logo. And you get a new node type with this uh, with this image. So um, this way you can create your own um, your own uh, node visualizations um, in Graffiti. <clears throat> and the great thing about palettes is they are not um, for you only, but they are shared with uh, with other users. Um, this is because they are saved with the graph. So um, right now, if, if I um, save this graph and um, a colleague of mine um, chooses to edit this graph and uh, he opens the application, then he gets the same palette that I created the graph with. So this way, um, this is a great, great way to, to share um, to share palettes amongst uh, different different um, users. All right. <clears throat> so um, next um, feature I wanted to show you is um, dark mode. That's the the latest addition of uh, the current uh, release. So for those of you who prefer um, dark UIs, um, you can switch to a dark theme here in, in the view settings. It looks like this. And now if, if I save this, um, I can uh, also save the graph with dark theme and this um, embeds um, a dark view of, of the graph in, in Confluence. <clears throat> So that's a nice gimmick for those of you who like it. Um, okay. Um, so um, uh, another thing I'd like to show you is um, how Graffiti um, stores the data. Uh, um, so um, Graffiti creates for, for each graph that is, for each diagram that is embedded in a page, um, adds an attachment. And you can actually see this here. If you go to the attachment of the page, um, you get a zip with a diagram name. And uh, you can also take a look in, into the zip. Um, there is an XML file, namely a, a GraphML file, 
which is the um, storage format. Um, so um, yeah, uh, and a preview image and some, some metadata. So um, you can actually download the SIP and uh, add it to a different um, Confluence page um, to copy uh, a graph to, to another Confluence page. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let me just switch back. So let's talk about the future of Graffiti for Confluence. Um, we are co constantly working on improving uh, Graffiti. Um, I think about a week ago, we released uh, version 1012 um, bug fix release and for um, this summer we have uh, planned a feature release um, that includes um, a lot of exciting new things and this will be version 1.1 uh, we are always already in the process of development um, so some of these features are already finished some some not um, the planned features include a read-only mode for users without write permissions. So um, <clears throat> that um, uh, users uh, that cannot edit the diagram can also open the, um, um, the full screen UI um, of, of Graffiti and the navigation capabilities of Graffiti. And they even can uh, calculate their own layouts on the, gra uh, on the diagram to get different views on the data um, <clears throat> without being able to change the embedded diagram for other users. Um, so um, the next feature is uh, shared item palettes. Um, currently, I mentioned that um, the custom palettes are uh, saved with the diagram, so in, in the diagram as an attachment. Um, <clears throat> but uh, what we are adding is that you can um, actually glo like globally share um, palettes with other users. So, so they are, um, other users can uh, choose which, uh, which palettes, which global palettes to see and which not. Um, and, um, um, this can be used to, for instance, to ensure uh, corporate design among diagrams because you can um, share your corporate design palettes uh, with everyone. Um, uh, or simply uh, you can share commonly used styles and custom notes. Um, so that's a great feature. Um, next thing, um, exported images. Um, can um, can be exported directly as uh, confluence attachments. So um, currently, you can um, export um, your diagram to the hard drive. <clears throat> but with version one point one, you will be able to export attachments, uh, ex export uh, diagrams directly to attachments, to page attachments. Um, <clears throat> We are working on improving flowchart diagrams, um, which includes an improved palette, um, uh, improved layout, and overall a streamlined flowchart creation. Um, we plan to, to include a lightbox feature that allows you to enlarge an embedded diagram if you click on it, just like you know it from uh, image galleries. And last but not least, we plan to include a diagram legend feature, which inserts an automatic uh, legend into the, the diagram that enables you to describe the element types that are part of the graph. All right, um, so just one more thing. Um, we currently work um, very customer demand driven. So if you have any um, feature requests or if you have any questions or you find anything missing um, in, in Graffiti, 
please do not uh, hesitate to contact us at um, graffiti minus four minus confluence at wildwebs.com. You see this um, email address here on the slide. All right, so um, uh, I've reached the end of my uh, presentation. I would like to ask you if you have any questions. So, um, okay, um, so first question, um, how does graffiti handle security? Um, yeah, so that's a, um, a good question. Uh, so actually, um, we um, don't have any security issues because everything that happens is on your local system. Um, we don't send any data to a server. So all the communication that happens is, is directly um, between directly in your in your confluence. <clears throat> so um, the, the um, actual graffiti editor application is served on your machine, served from from the confluence server to your machine. And um, all the layout algorithms um, run directly in your browser. So there is no communication at all um, with uh, with our servers, except if you um, if you choose to enable to optionally en enable um, error reporting to Wildworks, um, we get uh, messages from you um, when uh, an error occurs in, in the application. <clears throat> Okay, any others, any other questions? Um, so somebody asked, um, I'm a Wired Live user already. What advantages, uh, what advantages do I get from using Graffiti? So yeah, um, basically, um, um, I already um, explained, so, um, Wildlife is um, is the the basis of of graffiti, uh, but from graffiti you get um, the um, embedding and confluence on on top of uh, of the diagram editor. So you can um, share diagrams, you can embed them in um, in confluence pages for others to view or for others to edit. So you can collaborate uh, with uh, all the Confluence users with a lot of, of uh, different people without having to uh, manually do things like versioning and um, or manually having to, to, send, um, to send a save file to uh, many people. So that's, that's the advantage of graffiti over wildlife. Okay, um, so I think there are no further questions. Um, so thanks again for your attention. Um, I wish you all a pleasant day and I wish you much fun working with graffiti. See you.